Hey guys, TSL here, back with a brand new video. In today's video, I am happy to announce that we are finally starting back up the How To Script For Beginners Roblox series. Now, I say restart because, well, if you didn't know, you probably don't know unless you're a very OG member of the channel, but the first videos I ever started making on this channel was a scripting series. The videos were like pretty bad, pretty not well made, so we're gonna try to fix that now and that's why they are no longer on the channel. I think I deleted them around like 50 to 100 subs. And yeah, so let's get into it. Alright, so basically all I've done so far is I've just went on the Roblox Studios app which you can install by going over to the roblox.com website, click on the create tab and you should be able to download Roblox Studios from there. Once you open it up, once you're logged in, just open up a new base plate and that's what I've done so far. So first things first, I want to show you guys there's two different types of scripts that you have, well actually three that you have in Roblox. One of them is advanced and we're not going to be talking about that for a long time in the series. So the first two, the ones that we'll be talking about mainly, but today we will only be focusing on one for the first few videos as well, but I'll explain both of them right now. So first thing we'll do is I'll just go to the service called Service Script Service. This is a one of the many places that you should and could run your regular scripts. So if you go ahead and insert something called a script, well that'll give you a regular script. And this is a server script service is a great place to run these scripts because it's well just for organization and it's very secure. Scripts in general are much more secure than local scripts, which we'll talk about in a second, because local scripts get cloned into every client slash player, and exploiters can delete and access everything you've done with the local script and the local script itself. So that's why it's always a good idea to run scripts. Scripts can run in many places, such as a server script service, uh, the workspace, starter player scripts, or actually starter character scripts. Uh, I don't think they can run starter player scripts, but they can also run inside GUI objects, server storage, and probably some other places, but those places you really won't need them. So, next thing we want to talk about is local scripts. Now, local scripts can only run in, I think, six places, and I'll show you those in a second. So as you see, we have a local script right here, and basically this local script gives you access to everything on the client. For example, you can make a variable, which we'll talk about in a second as well, that can be accessed, or that can reference the player just by saying player is equal to game.players, which is this player service, and we can get the local player. You can only do this in a local script and not server scripts. Anyways, so yeah, local scripts are great for doing anything on the client and like special effects and all that good stuff are good for local scripts because they are less intense for the server so it should make things less laggy. Now like I said, they can only run in a select few places, one of them being start of GUI, starter player scripts, uh, they can run in starter packs and tools and uh and replicated first as well all right so if we pull up the documentation of local scripts local scripts will only run if it's a descendant meaning if it's inside of one of the following things the player's backpack such as a child of a tool as i mentioned player's character uh player's player gui player's player scripts and the replicated first so if we go back to roblox studios it can run here it can run in here it can run in here and here and in here and yeah some places it cannot run is in here 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 or here so also another thing to um, keep in mind is local scripts cannot access uh, some services such as service storage and service script service also, any changes you make through a local script will not be replicated to the server, 
So in other words, if you try to access that change in a server script, it won't have been changed. All right, so now let's actually get into some scripting. So I'll open up this script here, or actually I'll move it into the workspace since scripts can run there as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is how to make a variable. So in Lua, especially Roblox Lua, you need to use this local keyword. Now, hold on. You don't have to use this local keyword. You could also just type the variable name, which you'll use to reference the variable anywhere you want in the script and just set it af with an equal sign like this and then set it to what you want. So one of the data types, like a string number or something like that, which we'll, I'll talk about all of them in a second as well. But using the local keyword is faster and that's what you're going to use most of the times as I, I always use it and I, I do a lot of scripting. <laughs> so that can just be changed to this and now it's faster. Now something to keep in mind is if you have like a function which we won't be talking about to later episodes, uh, just give it a random name, and you have a variable like this variable 2 which is equal to 2 if you try to print out variable 2 here you'll see it's undefined because this local keyword makes it only available in this function but if you have a local variable outside like just like this var name one you can access it from anywhere alright so back to what we were saying so the data types in Roblox are as follow and I'll show you how to make them for variables as well so we have a number, which can be either a whole number integer or a, or a decimal. Also to make comments in Roblox, you use this dash dash. All right. So the next thing we have is a string. And this, the way you make a string is you put either quotes double quotes or single quotes and then just write whatever you want inside of it that's a string that can store anything next thing is a boolean and this is either true or it's false that's what a boolean is so you could just store like you can basically just store um, conditions next we'll talk about a table which you make by inserting these two curly bra brackets and then you can fill it up but the tables are a little bit more advanced because you can have a few different types of tables one is an array and this one can just be like just do like this um, and you just have these three different values we have one two three as one of them four one and three one four now if we use the built-in Roblox print function which will print out the value of whatever we pass well, let me just run this to show you what I'm going to be talking about you see it automatically has these 1, 2, and 3 in front of it as with an equal sign after it those are called indexes and that's how you can access an individual value so let's talk about this real quick so let's say I want to access the number 41 in just the number 41 in this table if I know where it's located all I have to do is table the name of our variable for the table then put these uh, square brackets and the index number which in this case is 2 An important thing to note if you're coming from a different programming language Roblox tables and arrays start at index 1 so this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 most programming languages would be 0 1 and 2 but Roblox is just built different so anyways this, if I run this, you'll see it should print 41, and 41 has been printed out. Okay, so now that we know that kind of table, let's just name this array. Now, what we want to do is get, is sh I want to show you how to make a dictionary. So you start with the same curly brackets as before, but this time, you give it the array or the index a name. So let's do like, um, let's say we're making a person and we give him a name and this is an equal sign. And then you can make the value any one of these data types. 
including another table and basically just do the equal sign and then that then same way as before to make another value add a comma and this time we'll do like age and then you can make this a number yep that that's my real age um, uh, yeah uh, and then we could do like let's just say one more thing for a boolean let's say um, blue eyes I don't know equals false alright so now if we go ahead and print out this person then we should get all this data see we could open that up in our output and you see all of our data is like that and instead of having the, the number indexes you saw before we have the names that we gave it so now similarly to how we access individual values in an array we used the square brackets followed by the name we have um, for the index so let's say I want to access the age I can just do person age and now when I run this script it should print out this number here and as you see that's what it did so now a few things more I want to talk about is if we wanted to set just the one value all right, so basically, first thing, let's go back to arrays for a second. If we want to add a new value to this array, let's say down here, we have to use the table.insert method, and then the first, the first argument is going to be the array you want to add to. So our, in our case, we called it array, so that's where this is coming from. And then we have the value you want to add in. And for me, I'll just do like 9... Nine eight six, and then if if I print out array, it should be one two three four one, uh, and three one four, and then nine nine eight six, and as you see, that's what it is. All right. Similarly, we could do table dot remove, and this takes in the index number. Uh, we also have some table dot find methods. We have a lot more that you can look up just by that you can find just by looking up table row blocks. All right, so now one last met thing I want to show you with the array is to get the length of an array, you just put hashtag and then the array's name, and this should print out three. And that's what you see has been printed out. Print out three because as you see up here, we have one, two, three. All right. Now let's try to print out the length of person. As you'll see, it'll print zero, even though we clearly have three different items. Now you can't get the length like this for a person, I mean, for a dictionary, and you'll have to make your own method to do it. So now this is very easy, but I'm not gonna cover it now because it have to do with functions, which we'll learn in a later video. Now the last thing I want to talk about with tables and dictionaries is instead of using table.insert for dictionaries, all you what you do is get the name of the dictionary. So for us it's person, the square brackets, and the name of the index that you want to create. So it's basically like accessing it, but we're gonna create it because we're gonna give it we're gonna access something that doesn't exist and give it a value which will make it exist. So for this, we'll say like, um, I don't know, uh, subs is equal to 1.300, or just 1300. Also, we were supposed to do it like this. So you access it, and then go out of the access and put an equal sign and assign it to the new value you want. And now if we go ahead and uh, print out person, but not the number, now we should have four values, including subs. Perfect. All right, guys, well, that is the data types. And that is actually the last thing we'll be covering in this video. But before you guys click off this video, I want to let you know that to celebrate the comeback of this series and 
me overall from my break, I will be posting one video every day this week and even two videos on Saturday. So make sure you come back every day for a new video, one video every day for this series, and then a different one video on Saturday for this series and one video for just a different thing. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Peace.